Welcome to a new episode of Woodland Engineering's Robot Builds. Today we're going to look at building wheel channels. So a wheel channel is a system that allows you to support your wheels in your wheelbase for your chassis without those wheels becoming loose or damaged or falling off your robot. So this is a really great way uh, to incorporate your wheels and motors into your chassis and keep them safe and secure. So first of all, let's look at why we want to do it this way. If you think back to the flex robot that Vex IQ provides, um, it uses a system similar to this. It has a motor using a plastic axle that has a built-in uh, axle lock or shaft collar onto it so it can't fall out, which is nice. It prevents it from coming out. Now, unfortunately, these plastic axles have a problem in that they cause your wheels to flex. And once you add weight of your chassis to this, your wheels will flex significantly and it can even cause the pins to separate from your motor. So number one, you always want to make sure you use metal axles, not plastic, but that means that you can't use this system because they'll just pull out. Now, why do we want to use metal axles instead of plastic? It's a strength thing. So here's a plastic axle and you'll notice that just a little bit of pressure, it bends significantly. If I take that same length, but in a metal axle, I can't bend this. I'd really, really have to try to get it to bend, which is good. We don't want our axles to bend because a bent axle is not going to help your robot at all. So today, we're going to build one of these wheel channels. And to do this, for this simple example, here are the parts that we're going to use. We have two 2x16 two beams, a pair of axles, a motor, two omni wheels, two small or medium sprockets, excuse me, a length of chain, I have four one by one pitch blue pins. I have four small spacers. I have six large spacers. I have four shaft collars or axle locks. And I have five eight pitch standoffs. Now you can modify this design to fit whatever space you're trying to build in. So feel free to change lengths, everything like that. It's up to you. This is just to give you an example of how to build it. So here we go. First off, I'm gonna take one of my 2x16 beams and have those ready. And then I'm gonna grab both of my axles and two of my shaft collars. And I'm gonna start simply by putting the shaft collars onto the end of my axles. Next, I'm gonna insert them into here. And for this particular build, I'm gonna go in four of the center holes from each end. Now, why does it matter that I'm four in? Well, that's a spacing issue and it has to do with the size of these Omni wheels. Now, why is it four in from here and four in from here? Well, because symmetry is really important when building in Vex IQ. Once you get out of symmetry, your plastic tends to have a little bit of stress and it bends. And once it starts bending, well, then your blue pins will start popping out, your chains won't hold tightly. You always wanna try and build Vex IQ robots as symmetrically as possible. Okay, the better they match up, the stronger they'll be. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna set this down with the axles pointing straight up towards you in the camera. So my next step is I'm gonna add two small spacers onto each of my axles. So one spacer per axle. Now, why do I do this? It's because the next piece I'm putting on is going to be these sprockets. And I don't want the sprocket to rub right up against this outer beam. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, if it's rubbing right up against the beam, it's gonna to tend to wear down the plastic as well as it creates a lot more friction so it doesn't turn freely. The other reason is that once we go ahead and add the chain, we need to have a little bit of space so that the chain itself doesn't rub against this beam either. So I've added my two medium sprockets and I'm gonna take and add two more small spacers, one to each of these axles. So once again, we've got sort of space on either side of our sprockets. So from here, we're ready to go ahead and add our wheels. In this case, I'm gonna use a standard Omni wheel, but you can of course use whatever wheel that you're interested in using. And I'm gonna put them on with the flat surface facing my sprocket. There's really not a reason for that. It's just how I prefer to build. And part of it has to do with the ease of adding spacers. Because now my next goal is to make sure that both of these wheels stay exactly where they're at. I don't want them to slide back and forth on these axles because again that's going to ruin the symmetry and it's going to throw everything off when we're driving. So now I'm going to take my six large spacers and I'm going to put three of them on each of these particular axles. Now obviously depending on what size axle you're using you may have to use a different set of spacers 
But again, the main point I want to make out is that we're even and symmetrical. Each of these reaches the same distance and keeps the same length. Now that I've got my spacers on, it's time for my last two shaft collars or axle locks. And I'm going to slide those on right to the ends there. Boom. Now we've got two items that are completely the same. And once we've got this second axle lock on, they're not going to fall off. They're attached to this piece of plastic. So it gets us our first piece of connection. So now I want to be able to support these axles from the other side. That's what keeps the axles from bending. And it also keeps the wheels from flexing. Because you'll notice right now, they've got quite a bit of flex in them. And we don't like that. So my next step is to give something for this to attach to. And that's where my eight pitch standoffs are going to come in. I'm going to take two and add them right to the very end of my 2x16 beam and I'm going to do that on both ends. So click that in, click that one in. Now I've got one left and what I want to make sure is that this beam doesn't flex in the middle. So I'm going to add a last standoff right to the dead center. Now that I've got these all in, I'm going to take my second beam and I'm going to line it up and lay it over my two axles. Once I've done that, I can push lightly on each end and the center and create a sturdy unit. So my entire wheelbase is now set. The actual channel is built. So the next thing I need to do is because we are building a chained drive so that when the motor turns one wheel, it turns the other one as well, we're going to add our chain. So this is a pretty simple thing. I've got a length of chain here. I'm going to drop it over each of those and then I'm going to flip my robot wheel channel over. Now you'll notice I have a lot more chain than I need. So I'm going to sort of line it up and measure it and figure out where I need to pop it apart. In this case, it looks like I need to pop it apart right here. So I'll just bend and flex, pop that extra piece of chain off, and then I'm going to grab these ends. I'm going to make sure it's, as, it's tight on the sprockets before I connect these. Pull them together, set one pin in and twist, and it just pops together just like that. If you look at the edge, it's a little loose, but that's fine for our purposes today. It always depends on how far you've spaced them as to whether or not you can get the chain super tight. But this is perfectly good for our purposes in building a standard wheelbase. So the last thing we have to do is attach our motor. So we're going to take this, I'm going to grab my four blue pins, and I'm going to drop these four pins just across the outside edge. Now, for a, comp for a competitive build or a com competition robot, I would probably add at least one more pin in the middle. It's never going to hurt you to have a little extra support on your motors, because remember, this is where all of the power is coming from, and you don't want it to come loose. Now, because of the length of the axle, I've got just the perfect amount of axle sticking out from the end, so I can line up my motor wheel with the axle, excuse me, my motor with the axle, sort of turn this just a little bit as I, as I pull, and you can hear that my axle is inside the motor and it's ready to go. So this is our wheel channel. And when we combine it with a second one and hook them up and program it, we've got a set ready to go for our chassis. Now, one of the questions we always get is, well, why do we chain them together? Why don't we just use a single motor and just drive from two wheels? Well, a lot of that has to do with uh, your agility on a VEX IQ field. With just one motor driving one wheel, you're going to have trouble making perfect turns in place. Once they're chained together, because both wheels will work in sync, you can make your robot turn exactly in a perfect circle if everything is spaced out evenly, both front to back and left to right sides. So as you're building, make sure you're again thinking about that symmetry because that's going to come into play once you take these wheel channels and add them to your competitive robot.